In information geometry, the Fisher information metric is a particular Riemannian metric which can be defined on a smooth statistical manifold, i.e., a smooth manifold whose points are probability measures defined on a common probability space. It can be used to calculate the informational difference between measurements. The metric is interesting in several respects. First, it can be understood to be the infinitesimal form of the relative entropy, specifically, it is the Hessian of the divergence. Alternately, it can be understood as the metric induced by the flat space Euclidean metric, after appropriate changes of variable. When extended to complex projective Hilbert space, it becomes the Fubini study metric, when written in terms of mixed states. It is the quantum Buer's metric. Considered purely as a matrix, it is known as the Fisher information matrix. Considered as a measurement technique where it is used to estimate hidden parameters in terms of observed random variables, it is known as the observed information. Definition Given a statistical manifold with coordinates, one writes for the probability distribution as a function of, here is drawn from the value space R for a random variable X. The probability is normalized by the Fisher information metric then takes the form. The integral is performed over all values x in R. The variable is now a coordinate on a Riemann manifold. The labels J and K index the local coordinate axes on the manifold. When the probability is derived from the Gibbs measure, as it would be for any Markovian process, then can also be understood to be a Lagrange multiplier. Lagrange multipliers are used to enforce constraints, such as holding the expectation value of some quantity constant. If there are n constraints holding n different expectation values constant, then the dimension of the manifold is n dimensions smaller than the original space. In this case, the metric can be explicitly derived from the partition function, a derivation and discussion is presented there. Substituting from information theory, an equivalent form of the above definition is to show that the equivalent form equals the above definition note that and apply on both sides. Relation to the kullback leibler divergence Alternately, the metric can be obtained as the second derivative of the relative entropy or kullback leibler divergence. To obtain this, one considers two probability distributions and which are infinitesimally close to one another, so that with an infinitesimally small change of in the j direction and the rate of change of the probability distribution. Then, since the kullback leibler divergence has an absolute minimum zero for p equals q1 has an expansion up to second order in of the form, the symmetric matrix is positive definite and is the Hessian matrix of the function at the stationary point. This can be thought of intuitively as the distance between two infinitesimally close points on a statistical differential manifold is the amount of information, i.e., the informational difference between them, relation to Ruppiner geometry. The Ruppiner metric and Weinhold metric arise as the thermodynamic limit of the Fisher information metric. Change in entropy the action of a curve on a Riemannian manifold is given by the path parameter here is time t. This action can be understood to give the change in entropy of a system as it is moved from time a to time b. Specifically, one has as the change in entropy. This observation has resulted in practical applications in chemical and processing industry. In order to minimize the change in entropy of a system, one should follow the minimum geodesic path between the desired end points of the process. The geodesic minimizes the entropy due to the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which states that the action is bounded below by the length of the curve, squared. Relation to the Jensen-Shannon divergence the Fisher metric also allows the action and the curve length to be related to the Jensen-Shannon divergence. Specifically, one has where the integrand djsd is understood to be the infinitesimal change in the Jensen-Shannon divergence along the path taken. Similarly, for the curve length, one has that is, the square root of the Jensen-Shannon divergence is just the Fisher metric, as Euclidean metric.
for a discrete probability space, that is, a probability space on a finite set of objects. The Fisher metric can be understood to simply be the Euclidean metric restricted to a positive quadrant of a unit sphere. After appropriate changes of variable, an n-dimensional unit sphere embedded in dimensional space is defined as the metric on the surface of the sphere as given by where the O1 forms. They are the basis vectors for the cotangent space writing as the basis vectors for the tangent space, so that, the Euclidean metric may be written as the superscript, flat, is there to remind that, when written in coordinate form, this metric is with respect to the flat space coordinate. Consider now, the change of variable. The sphere condition now becomes the probability normalization condition while the metric becomes the last can be recognized as one-fourth of the Fisher information metric. To complete the process, recall that the probabilities are parametric functions of the manifold variables, that is, one has. Thus, the above induces a metric on the parameter manifold, or, in coordinate form, the Fisher information metric is where, as before, the superscript Fisher is present to remind that this expression is applicable for the coordinates, whereas the non-coordinate form is the same as the Euclidean metric. That is, the Fisher information metric on a statistical manifold is simply the Euclidean metric restricted to the positive quadrant of the sphere. After appropriate changes of variable, when the random variable is not discrete but continuous, the argument still holds. This can be seen in one of two different ways. One way is to carefully recast all of the above steps in an infinite dimensional space, being careful to define limits appropriately, etc., in order to make sure that all manipulations are well-defined, convergent, etc. The other way, as noted by Gromov, is to use a category theoretic approach, that is, to note that the above manipulations remain valid in the category of probabilities. As Fubini study metric, the above manipulations deriving the Fisher metric from the Euclidean metric can be extended to complex projective Hilbert spaces. In this case, one obtains the Fubini study metric. This should perhaps be no surprise, as the Fubini study metric provides the means of measuring information in quantum mechanics. The Buer's metric, also known as the Hellstrom metric, is identical to the Fubini study metric, although the latter is usually written in terms of pure states, as below, whereas the Buer's metric is written for mixed states. By setting the phase of the complex coordinate to zero, one obtains exactly one-fourth of the Fisher information metric, exactly as above. One begins with the same trick of constructing a probability amplitude written in polar coordinates, so, here, is a complex value probability amplitude, and a strictly real. The previous calculations are obtained by setting the usual condition that probabilities lie within a simplex, namely that is equivalently expressed by the idea the square amplitude be normalized. When is real? This is the surface of a sphere. The Fubini study metric, written in infinitesimal form, using quantum mechanical bracket notation, is in this notation. One has that an integration over the entire measure space X is written as the expression can be understood to be an infinitesimal variation. Equivalently, it can be understood to be a one form in the cotangent space. Using the infinitesimal notation, the polar form of the probability above is simply inserting the above into the Fubini study metric gives. Setting in the above makes it clear that the first term is the Fisher information metric. The full form of the above can be made slightly clearer by changing notation to that of standard Riemannian geometry, so that the metric becomes a symmetric two-form acting on the tangent space. The change of notation is done simply replacing and noting that the integrals are just expectation values, so, the imaginary term is a symplectic form, it is the Berry phase or geometric phase. In index notation, the metric is, again, the first term can be clearly seen to be the Fisher information metric, by setting, equivalently, 
The Fubini study metric can be understood as the metric on complex projective Hilbert space that is induced by the complex extension of the flat, Euclidean metric. The difference between this, and the Buer's metric, is that the Buer's metric is written in terms of mixed states. Formal definition. A slightly more formal, abstract definition can be given, as follows. Let X be an orientable manifold, and let be a measure on X. Equivalently, let be a probability space on, with sigma algebra and probability. The statistical manifold S of X is defined as the space of all measures on X. Note that this space is infinite dimensional, and is commonly taken to be a fresh A space. The points of S are measures. Pick a point and consider the tangent space. The Fisher information metric is then an inner product on the tangent space. With some abuse of notation, one may write this as here, and a vectors in the tangent space, that is, the abusive notation is to write the tangent vectors as if they are derivatives, and to insert the extraneous d in writing the integral. The integration is meant to be carried out using the measure over the whole space x. This definition of the metric can be seen to be equivalent to the previous, in several steps. First, one selects a submanifold of S by considering only those measures that are parameterized by some smoothly varying parameter. Then, if is finite dimensional, then so is the submanifold. Likewise, the tangent space has the same dimension as, with some additional abuse of language. One notes that the exponential map provides a map from vectors in a tangent space to points in an underlying manifold. Thus, if is a vector in the tangent space, then is the corresponding probability associated with point conversely, given the point. The logarithm gives a point in the tangent space. Thus, one has the appearance of logarithms in the simpler definition, previously given.